Uh, measurements are very important to the scientists because so much of our work or data is uh, dealing with measurements and quantitative units. So we need to understand the measuring system that scientists use. Most scientific data comes from measurements. So a standard is needed for all scientists. And a standard keeps data accurate, precise, reproducible, and unchanging. Uh, scientists need to be able to reproduce the data of other scientists, and so having a standard uh, makes this easy and convenient. Three systems that we will be using are the metric system, the SI system, and the CGS systems. Beginning with the metric system, uh, it was introduced in 1791 during the French Revolution, probably really the only good thing that came out of the French Revolution. It was uh, not developed originally as a scientific tool, but just as part of the revolution in trying to uh, supposedly get everything to go along with reason. But in 1875, it was adopted as a scientific standard. And this made sense because of its being based on the powers of 10. And being based on the powers of 10 made it fit right in with our counting and the way we count and right in with the way we do numbers. Our whole number system is based on powers of 10. That's why we call it the decimal system. In reality, the metric system just uh, is a natural fit for uh, the scientific world. The uh, units in the metric system, for length, we have the meter. Mass, we have the gram. Volume, we have the liter. Time is the second, and temperature is Celsius. The Sistema de International uh, System was developed in the uh, 60s. came up with seven fundamental units, and then all the other units that come out of the SI system are derived units. The derived units and the fundamentals are still part of the metric system. The uh, top four, length, mass, time, and temperature. And then we had electric current, luminosity, and the amount of substance. The top four are very important to us as chemists at this level. And uh, at the end of the year, we're going to be talking about the amount of substance. But other than these seven, anything else is considered a derived unit. So what are the seven fundamental units? Well, length is the meter. Mass is the kilogram. Time is the second. Temperature is Kelvin. Then we have electric current, which is the ampere or amp. And then we have luminous intensity, and that's the candela. And then the amount of a substance, which is mole. And you want to know these seven for testing quizzes. And remember that the uh, top four are the ones that we will be using the most. All the other units that come out of the SI system are considered derived units. And derived units are created from the fundamental units. So for something such as volume, it would be meter times meter times meter, which is length times width times height, which is the meter cubed. And a cubic meter is actually pretty big. It'd be more like a bathtub uh, than something that we would be using uh, in the chemistry lab for a beaker. So we have the CGS system. And the CGS system is just a little bit smaller and a little bit more useful in the laboratory. But it's still part of the um, metric system. And we have the centimeter, and we have the gram, and we have seconds. And these are just a bit more lab friendly. And so that will be what we're using in the lab a lot. Now, a really cool thing about the metric system is that it's based on tens. And there are a set of prefixes that help us understand the units. So we have to learn some prefixes. And the large prefixes are as such. We have tera, which means one trillion. Giga, which means one billion. Mega, which means one million. And kilo, which is a thing. Now, kilo is the most important one here for us. The small prefixes are deci, which means one-tenth. Centi which means one uh, hundredth, one uh, thousandth is milli, one millionth is micro, and one billionth is nano. And notice that since M is already used for milli, micro uses the Greek letter mu in its abbreviation. So be sure you note that difference. 
in the units. And also notice that we have decimal equivalents and fractional equivalents for each of these uh, small prefixes. The two most important will be centi and milli. Our most common units are going to be gram, liter, and meter. And in the laboratory, of course, we're going to be using Celsius for our temperature. So those are our most common units. And then, of course, our most common prefixes are going to be kilo, centi, and milli. Most com common measurements that we're going to see in the laboratory, kilogram, milligram, uh, milliliter, centimeter, and millimeter. I like to add on, we're going to use grams uh, a lot also, and I probably didn't put that on here because it's a, a base unit, but grams, liters, and meters in themselves will be used quite a bit with uh, these variations uh, that we use in the laboratory. If you have any questions, send an email to MrKazi at MrKazi.com and be sure to go to MrKazi.com for PowerPoint videos and much, much more. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. These studies have shown it increases your IQ. Uh, if you have any problems or questions, send me an email and maybe it will make the problem of the week. Thanks a lot. Happy eye on this.